David Lobkovsky grew up in Lithuania, then a part of the Russian Empire. He died in Israel 81 years later. A talented artist, his life spanned the most tumultuous period of Jewish history. In Vilna, even the trees were in harmony, entwined with one another. A cultural utopia for a brief moment. Nearly 50,000 Jews going about their everyday lives. David? Put down your paintbrushes. You have lessons to do. Your father won't pay me to tutor you if you aren't learning. Rivka, you're so beautiful. Let me paint you. <laughs> you silly boy. Let me see what you're painting this time. Uh, it's just parts of the city. Uh, I'm still learning. Oh, David, you have captured our city. It's vitality. Come, let's go down to the river. Beautiful, isn't it? I want to remember it as it changes from season to season. Everything so clean, so pure. You bring it all to life. You create beauty everywhere. I see how you study the people. It's their faces, their eyes, our neighbors, our friends, our families. In 1932, David's enthusiasm for communism took him to Moscow, where he painted theatrical scenery and honed his art skills. In 1935, he was accepted into the famed Leningrad Art Academy. But storm clouds were building, all captured in David's painting of a young girl's face, light and happiness, becoming fear and despair. By the late 1930s, Wholesale murder began to spread across Europe. As the Second World War began, the Nazis began the implementation of the final solution to the Jewish question. European Jews were first concentrated in ghettos, then deported to concentration camps, ultimately to Nazi extermination centers. The slaughter had begun. In 1938, and still a devoted communist, David was accused of anti-Soviet activity and sentenced to eight years in a labor camp in Siberia. Months later, I followed and taught at a camp school nearby. It was frigid, day and night. Icy, squalid conditions, almost subhuman. Prisoners were weak from near starvation. Rodents, dysentery. Some suffered in solitary confinement, but David survived the brutal and atrocious conditions of the camp by using his artistic skills to become the camp tattoo artist and painter of the guards and their families. A piece of bread here, an extra portion of meat, enough to keep him alive. And then the war was over. In 1946, David was released and we were permitted to return to Vilnius. Back then, it was a part of the Lithuanian Soviet Socialist Republic of the USSR. But it was not the same. Everyone we'd known was dead or gone. Few buildings were standing. Those first days, Rivka and I could do nothing but cry. My hand would shake as I held the paintbrush and tried to make sense of it. I took menial jobs just to survive. There was no sense, only survival. David painted a wall, got paid a potato. Painted another wall, a few eggs. Slowly we pieced together a life. But even those trees that had meant harmony now struggled to survive. In 1958, we were permitted to move to Israel, and my soul took its first deep breath of home. A sense I hadn't experienced in half a century. I began to paint those people and episodes of my life that had been hidden all these years. In 1959, David had his first exhibition. We were so excited, so hopeful. Rivka expected too much. The critics applauded. But the rest of the country wasn't ready to confront my paintings that showed the ugly memories of the Holocaust. I hurt for David, but then I realized it didn't matter to him. 
He'd reached a new serenity in his life. The colors of his paintings grew brighter. They were filled with a new optimism. I was honored to illustrate a book dedicated to the 100th anniversary of Shalom Aleichem. But his paintings, those he decided to not sell. Trading shekels for the memories of his life seemed wrong. Instead, he lived a quiet, ascetic life with just a few friends. Rivka died in 1989. By then, my hands were too arthritic to hold a brush. In 1991, David Lakovsky died, but nearly 500 drawings and paintings survived. Some are in Israel, some in South Africa, and fortunately for us, many are here for us to view and to reflect and remember. <laughs>